This is part two of a series of videos where we build a Google Sheets stock portfolio tracker. We are building this free tool that we can use from our phones or computers. It requires minimum data entry, it tracks our stocks, it shows charts that help us visualize our investments, and it also tracks our portfolio performance against the S&P 500. In this upcoming video, we are building the portfolio table in the portfolio sheet. This is where we track our stock positions results that we got so far. Now that we build the trades spreadsheet, it's time to move on to the portfolio one. And over here, we are going to use the unique function to bring the unique ticker symbols from the trades spreadsheet. And this function is just going to take everything in there and obviously give us the unique values. But the great part about it is that whenever we will add a new unique value, the function will just bring it to the results that we have in the first spreadsheet without us doing any additional work. So over here, I just added Microsoft and Google and you see that they have been added to column A from the portfolio spreadsheet, which is really awesome because we don't need to do any additional work to do that. Now with the tickers brought in here, I'm just going to add the next pieces of data that we are going to need in this spreadsheet, the company name, uh, the total cost, the cost per share, the value is the current value of our investment. Now we are also going to add the percentage result to see how we perform and also the dollar amount, the dollar result. In this next few steps, I'm going to form at the table to make it look better. If you're not interested in that, you can just uh, skip ahead a minute or two to the more interesting part. But over here, we're making the header stand out. I'm gonna make it white and I'm just going to adjust the column widths. This is going to be adjusted also later. I forgot to add the number of shares, which is a really important piece of data in here, and I'm adding it now. Next, we are starting to use the Google Finance function. We serve it the name as the second parameter, as the attribute, and it just returns us the name of the company. So we don't need to enter that manually. And we also get the current share price by passing it a ticker symbol and the attribute price. Uh, this is an optional attribute, but I just added it in there. If you don't add it, you will still get the current share price. I just added the format to have it formatted as dollars. And uh, now for the number of shares, we are going to use the sum if function. Now for the first argument, we need to pass the column A from the trades spreadsheet. For the second parameter, this is the lookup value. This is telling Google Sheets what to look for in column A from the trade spreadsheet and it's going to look for the A2 values from the portfolio sheet, which is the ticker. And for the last parameter is the trades that we had. So the formula will look for the ticker and where it finds the ticker that we served it, it adds the number of shares that we have. Uh, I'm just formatting this to one decimal point and it should be enough for the number of shares column. Now for the value, this is really simple. We're multiplying the current share price with the number of shares that we hold. The formula got auto filled and we just need to do some minor adjustment over there and that also looks good now for the total cost we need to use some if again with this function you have to be really careful because google sheets assumes a lot of things and you should be careful how you enter your parameters because you might get stuck but i'm just entering them manually uh, just like i did previously this is a very similar formula to the one that we added initially the sum if but this time instead of adding the column c the number of shares we're adding the amount this is going to do the exact same thing it's going to calculate what is the total cost for our individual positions so facebook to the last one which is activision blizzard that got added in there now for the cost per share we're just using a simple formula we're dividing the total cost by the number of shares and we got that information really easily and for the results we can use a few different formulas but I'm just going to use the simplest one, divide the current share price by the cost per share and just subtract one to get the percentage difference in there. This is standard calculation of percentage change. Uh, we got a lot of numbers in there, so we need to do some proper formatting just like that. And now we have the percentage results. Simply subtract the total cost from the current value and that's it. And now to make this tracker even more interesting, I'm just going to apply some conditional formatting to these two columns and I'm going to go to conditional formatting. Again, if you don't care about this, you can just uh, skip ahead a few seconds. But what I'm doing here, if the value is greater than, let's say, 0.0.1, I should have probably 
put just zero in there, but you can do that in your spreadsheet. And we're going to format this with green. And for the case where our result is less than, or it should be less than or equal to 0 0.0.1, again, put zero in there. We are formatting it with a red color, maybe change the font color a bit. And let's see how it looks. This is not really okay with our table. So I'm just going to change this format to this color from here and hit done. I still don't like how that one looks. So I'm just going to change to a lighter shade of red and the font, I made it black again. And that's it. Now our table is formatted. It looks good, but let's test it. Let's add a new investment in there. I'm adding Microsoft. Let's say I'm adding some old historical data that I forgot to put in the first time. If I go back, see I had 0.32. If I go back to the portfolio, I have Microsoft in there from the unique function, but I still need to copy the formulas down. You will have to do this manually, but how often do you add a new position? If you're a long-term investor, I guess not very often. So that should not be too much of a hassle. We're just testing again, adding some other values just to see if everything gets updated. And let's see. Okay. It, it did. Our tracker appears to be working correctly. This was part two from a series of videos where we create a portfolio tracker from scratch. If you want to see part three, where we start adding our comparison to the S&P 500, check out the description for the link to part number three. And thanks a lot for watching part two.